Hello students, this is the first vocabulary video of the class Exegesis of Book of Revelation. Before we start, let's pray briefly. Dear our gracious Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you so much that we can start a new school year and we start uh, studying the Book of Revelation. <coughs> Give us wisdom from above that we can understand your word and give the meanings to other people. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Yes, the first uh, guide is about introduction and orientation. Okay. Here are two people. The one with the black hair is me. And the one next is my husband. Actually, I have my doctoral degree in the New Testament and my husband has one in the Old Testament. Actually, he has two doctorates in the Old Testament. So we are a Bible couple. The first word that we want to think about is the word preterism. Preterism holds that Ancient Israel finds its continuation or fulfillment in the Christian church at the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70. So preterism means everything happened before AD 70. The term preterism comes from the Latin preter, which is a prefix denoting that something is past or beyond. Adherents of preterism are known as preterists. So, preterism interprets the Bible prophecies as things happened in the past. Second word is anti-papal. Papal means papacy and anti means against. Right? So, anti-papal. Opposed to or hostile toward the Pope is the meaning of anti-papal. The word popery adjective is popish, and papism, the adjective is papist, are mainly historical pejorative words in the English language for Roman Catholicism, once frequently used by Protestants and Eastern Orthodox Christians to label their Roman Catholic opponents who differed from them in, according, in accepting the authority of the Pope over the Christian church. Uh, the papist accepted the authority of Pope over the Christian church, while the reformers and Protestants do not accept him as the main leader of the spiritual uh, church of Christ. Right? Next one is futurism. Futurism is a Christian eschatological view that interprets portions of the book of Revelation, the book of Ezekiel, and the book of Daniel as future events in a literal, physical, apocalyptic, and global context. By comparison, other Christian eschatological views interpret these passages as past events in a symbolic, historic context Preterism or historicism. Uh, preterism counts them symbolically, historicism counts them historically, or as present day events in a non literal and spiritual context, that is idealism. It usually has a close association with pre millennial dispensationalism. Dispensationalism is closely related to futurism. As you can see, there are uh, about four uh, methods, methodology of interpreting uh, Daniel and Revelation. They are preterism, historicism, idealism, and futurism. Futurism is related to dispensationalism. Yeah. 
let's look at idealism in the context of Christian eschatology idealism also called the spiritual approach the allegorical approach the non-literal approach and many other names involves an interpretation of the book of revelation that sees all of the imagery of the book as symbolic uh, for example there are seven churches in revelation chapters 2 and 3 and in in historicism they represent historical churches of the ages but in idealism the admonishment to the seven churches uh, are just an idea, ideal uh, encouragement to all Christians in all ages in all the world. So there is no specific uh, application or fulfillment of the prophecy in idealism. So that is the special feature of idealism. And in reality, uh, if you interpret all the Bible and Book of Revelation and Daniel with idealism, there is no fulfillment of the prophecy, actually. Next one is historicism. In Christian eschatology, historicism is a method of interpretation of biblical prophecies which associates symbols with historical persons, nations, or events. The main primary texts of interest to Christian historicists include apocalyptic literature, such as the Book of Daniel and the Book of Revelation. It sees the prophecies of these books as being fulfilled throughout history, extending from the past through the present to the future. So historicism understands the Bible prophecies with the historical actual fulfillments. Okay. Now we come to Thomas Mayers. Thomas Mayers was a translator and editor of John Calvin's commentaries on Daniel and Ezekiel. In these years, he translated and he uh, somehow introduced the early uh, reformers and compared with Calvin as well. So now we go to early reformers. The Protestant Reformation was the 16th century religious, political, intellectual, and cultural upheaval that splintered Catholic Europe, setting in place the structures and beliefs that would define the continent in the modern era. Uh, Johannes, so, um, so far we talked about the Reformation, and now we come to early reformers. Johannes Oikolampadius, Only Hitzwingli, Conrad Pelican, and Johannes Bollinger are known as early reformers in the Calvinist tradition. They were very active right after Luther's uh, Reformation, uh, but um, after them and following them, John Calvin came, but in the similar thought flow from these early reformers. Now we come to Johannes Oikolampadius. Johannes Oikolampadius was living in this year up to 1531, was a German Protestant reformer in the Calvinist tradition from the Electoral Palatinate. He was the leader of the Protestant faction in the Baden Disputation of 1526, and he was one of the four founders of Protestant theology, engaging in disputes with Erasmus, Zwingli, Luther, and Martin Busser. Kelvin adopted his view on the Eucharist dispute against Luther. His views on the Eucharist upheld the metaphorical against the literal interpretation of the word body. In Catholic Church, 
the Eucharist means the literal body of Christ. When you take the Eucharist in your body, it, became, it becomes the real body of Jesus. Uh, that's the Catholic position. But Johannes Oikolampadius said, no, it is metaphorical and symbolic rather than literal body of Christ. Next one is Christian Knorr von Rosenroth, very long name, in 1600s, was a German Christian Hebraist and Christian Kabbalist born in Silesia. At Amsterdam, he became acquainted with an Armenian prince and influenced by the chief rabbi, Mayor Stern, Dr. John Lightfoot, and Henry Moore. He studied Oriental languages, chemistry, and the Kabbalistic sciences. He devoted himself to the study of Hebrew. Later, he became a student of the Kabbalah. Uh, the word Kabbalah, we will look at it right after, in which he believed to find proofs of the doctrines of Christianity. What is interesting about this person is he lived in this time, and he uh, studied like Daniel and Revelation, and uh, predicted that after two hundred years, Jesus will come. And after two hundred years means eighteen hundreds, like eighteen eighty eight, eighteen forty four. So all those important years uh, were. Uh, within his prediction of 200 years. So it was very interesting that in this time, he also uh, interpreted the prophecies historically and then applied to uh, 1800s for the fulfillment. Now we come to the word Kabbalism. Jewish Kabbalah is a set of esoteric teachings meant to explain the relationship between the unchanging eternal God, the mysterious Ein Sof, the infinite, and the mortal finite universe, God's creation. So the relationship between eternal God, mysterious God, and God's creation, that is Jewish Kabbalah, it forms the foundation of mystical religious interpretations within Judaism. So Kabbalism is a mystical, mystical religious interpretation group. Okay. Next one is dispensationalism. Dispensationalism is a particular hermeneutic or analytical system for interpreting the Bible based on a literal translation and which stands in contrast to the traditional system of covenant theology used in biblical interpretation. Dispensationalism divides the history into dispensations, periods, periodization, and the last period is, of, of course, the end time, and they advertise for the third temple building, I believe you heard about that, and also the literal seven years plague and also uh, literal seven years tribulation and what else is there uh, dispensation oh, and rapture before Jesus will actually come people will be raptured that is part of their theory and J. N. Darby is the one who kind of started the dispensationalism. John Nelson Darby was an Anglo-Irish Bible teacher, one of the influential figures among the original Plymouth Brethren and the founder of the Exclusive Brethren. He is considered to be the father of modern dispensationalism and futurism, pre-tribulation rapture theology, what it means is, before the tribulation will come, the faithful Christians will be raptured. 
rapture theology was popularized extensively in the 1830s by John Nelson Darby and the Plymouth Brethren and further popularized in the United States in the early 20th century by the wide circulation of the Schofield Reference Bible. As you can see, John Darby, Schofield Reference Bible, Dispensationalism, Futurism, they are uh, in rapture. They are very closely related uh, terms. Next one is George Eldon Lott. George Eldon Lott was a Baptist minister and professor of New Testament exegesis and theology at Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena, California, known in Christian eschatology for his promotion of inaugurated eschatology. So he promoted inaugurated eschatology. Uh, I think some of you remember that we studied about it in Synoptic Gospels, inaugurated eschatology. So eschatology already inaugurated by Jesus coming is the meaning. He authored a theology of the New Testament and believed in both present and future aspects of the kingdom of God. I believe you heard about the term already and not yet. And this is by George Eldon Lott. Already, Jesus is here. The kingdom started, but not yet. But the kingdom of God is not fully um, manifested yet. Already and not yet is from George Eldon Lott. Lott was a notable modern proponent of historic premillennialism and often criticized dispensationalist views. He was not a dispensationalist. He criticized them. Here is a city named Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids is a city and county seat of Kent County in the U.S. state of Michigan. It is in Michigan state. At the 2020 census, the city had a population of about 2,000 200,000 people, right? Which ranks it as the second most populated city in the state of Michigan after Detroit. The city is known as a center of Christian publishing, home to Sondervan, Baker Books, Kregel Publications, Erdman's Publishing, and Our Daily Bread Ministries. These are very famous um, Christian book publishers, right? They are all clocked in Grand Rapids. So Grand Rapids is very well known uh, with these publishers like Sondervan, Baker, Kregel, Erdmans, and those things. And as you know, our seminary, uh, Seventh Adventist Theological Seminary in Andrews, is also in Michigan State, and Grand Rapids is not far from uh, that uh, town. Now we come to the word exegesis. Exegesis from the Greek word exegesis, from exegesi, meaning to lead out, is a critical explanation or interpretation of a text. Traditionally, the term was used primarily for work with religious texts, especially the Bible. The phrase biblical exegesis is now used to distinguish studies of the Bible from other critical textual explanations. There are many critical studies of the Bible texts, right? Historical criticism, source criticism, form criticism, literary criticism, and exegesis is distinguished from them. Exegesis includes the study of the historical and cultural backgrounds of the author, text, and original audience. In exegesis, you study these things, and basically it is the study of the biblical texts. The contrasting word with Exegesis is eisegesis. Uh, you know the Greek word ex, 
X means out, right? And A means into. So A is Jesus is a process of interpreting text in such a way as to introduce one's own presuppositions, agendas, ideas, or biases. It is commonly referred to as reading into the text. Eisegesis is best understood when contrasted with exegesis. Exegesis is drawing out a text's meaning while it's not white, but while. Sorry. Just a minute. Uh, Eisegesis. While. Uh, while Ace Jesus is when a reader imposes their interpretation of the text. So Ace Jesus draws out the meaning from the text, but Ace Jesus mean, means you put your own ideas into the text. So we are not supposed to the Ace Jesus in studying the Bible. Next one is Kenneth Strand. Kenneth Strand was professor of church history at the theology, in the Theological Seminary Andrews University, Berrien Springs, Michigan. He was also known as a Revelation scholar with his literary structure of Revelation. You probably have seen that he divided the Revelation into two sections historical section and also prophetic section, that kind of thing. Uh, he was the one who did it. He also authored Sabbath in Scripture and History. We will study uh, with his writings pretty much. This is the picture of him. He died in 1997. I got a class from him personally too. Apocalypse, from ancient Greek, apokalypsis, meaning revelation or disclosure, is a genre of writings concerning visions or prophecies of the end times or time to come. Apocalypses characteristically begin with a revelation requiring interpretation by a heavenly mediator and culminate in a final judgment in which the good are rewarded, the wicked punished in a life beyond death, meaning after resurrection. Book of Daniel and Book of Revelation are apocalyptic ones. They are part of apocalyptic books. Okay. Now we will think about foretelling and foretelling. Foretelling means to make public, while foretelling seeks to change the present for present foretelling reveals the future foretelling exhorts edifies comforts and brings out a change while foretelling is revealing foretelling is to utter forth declare a thing which can only be known by divine revelation declare the divine will to interpret the purposes of god or to make known in any way the truth of God, which is designed to influence people. It can only be uncovered and revealed through prophets. This is foretelling. Now we come to foretelling. means to predict the future or a future event ahead of time. Foretelling is the declaration of future events as revealed from the Lord, pertaining especially to the kingdom of God. Prophecy has both elements of foretelling and foretelling. So prophecies do foretelling and also foretelling. That's what it means. Okay, now we have looked at uh, 20 related vocabularies uh, with the introduction of the Revelation class. The detailed description of the class, we will talk about it in the online uh, lecture uh, through Google Meet. 
and I will also communicate on e-class and through Kakao Talk as well. Have a good weekend and we will meet on March 6, let's say at 10 o'clock the first time and we will set up the uh, time and meeting method at that moment. Thank you so much for listening carefully. Bye.